I've only got one tetragon yellow colony, yes. which I dutifully keep in my laundry with a hole drilled through the wall. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> They're on a heat mat, but they're only warmed in the morning. Yes. And I find that they actually get out when it's just a little bit too cold for them because it's on a cool wall. Yes. They come out and it's like, oh, oh, actually I can't really flap my, my wings because it's a bit cold. And there's, there's sort of, they're hanging on the wall or hanging on a bit of the foliage oh, right. until so, it warms up. Whereas the Ostroplebia, they, they just will not come out until it's oh, quite well, warm. It's probably better. See, here's a tetragonial hive. It's too cold for them for most of the year here. So what you do is you put your hive inside the house and you run a little piece of conduit or plastic to the outside. Now I thought this is perfect for people in Australia who are in a, an area unsuitable for tetragonula, like for example, say Melbourne. Melbourne, Geelong. So all these people who just can't experience the joy of native bees, you could do it. You could have them in your uh, house and during summer they're laughing. It also means that if summer got too hot, yes. They don't so, have the meltdown yeah, like so, we do in Sydney a so lot of the time. I, I think this is the perfect pet. Yep. The joke is the bees don't care about you at all, but you love the bees. Yeah. Like the, You really do connect with the bees, I yeah, find. I agree. And just watching them come in and out and doing their stuff. So I think that anyone in Australia who wants uh, a tetragonula hive, this is the way knowing that they're not going to cause a feral bee problem. Yes, because they can't, um, they won't swarm because there's nowhere really for them to swarm to. And they're if they never do, gonna they're going to die. That. Yeah, that's so right. So yeah. it's a pretty uh, straightforward uh, equation. Yep, yep, it, it's a good thing. Where would I get those stems? If I'm looking to get these stems... Um, along, along the highway and stuff, you'll find the fennel that's bolted. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, the lantana is so, really good. Uh, lantana, ba bamboo, and fennel. Yeah, weed. Weed. Recycling, yay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, so, how many different species of bees could live in a habitat like this? Um, well, probably half a dozen at least. And would they live happily together? Yes. I've got blocks out the back that I've been able to count about six species. I've got three resin bees, black resin bee species. I've got Wow. Firetail resin bees and a couple of masked bees, Exonura, the reed bees, and then there's the solitary wasps. And solitary wasps are okay, they're like solitary bees, they're not aggressive because they haven't got anything to, to defend. Um, to defend. Yeah, they haven't got their food and their brood to defend, so they're kind of, they, they're far less aggressive, and that's the same with the wasps as well. And people sort of freak out on my. I'm going to get wasps yes, in there, you don't but mind. that's okay. They're good now, because they. This roof, you need the roof to protect it from weathering more than anything. You'd, I've got blocks out there that out on my decking that have enough protection because they're on the decking, so yes. I don't have roofs on them. Um, then there's these that you can just put a little bit of like hardy plank, or um, I've got. So how deep are the holes? Ideally, about. Okay, so you, you sort of like six inches, yeah. wow. The theory is the bigger the bee, the longer the hole. And you put different diameters in? Yeah. Can you see that? We've got mud. Mud equals wasp. Yep. But as Megan was saying earlier, uh, these solitary wasps aren't aggressive and are sort of useful garden predators mm. eating all your manky uh, caterpillars. Yep. and absolutely. But this is, these are resin nests, and also these are resin bee nests here. Really? And so these ones here. Even those, that little one there? Yeah. Okay, one, that must be, I'm pretty is that sure a different species? This is probably a red tail. So Shrewd. if you didn't know anything about solitary bees, this is the go-to seminar, isn't it? Oh, well, I think so. So bees business, okay. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, <laughs> it's not often EnviroTube uh, promotes sort of uh, a business, but bees business, it's unique. It's, it's special. Conservation education. Conservation education. Yeah. And you're going to see things you just would never see. I mean, who has this at their place? Who has <laughs> all of this happening? No, not many people. Okay, so each um, block is drilled with three different size holes. There's eight, six and four millimetre holes. And the um, reeds or, or bamboo, lantana, anything with a pithy centre. This would house things like mask bees, reed bees, um, leaf cutters. Um, so you could potentially have at least half a dozen species of bee living in this sort of structure. And because it's got a little roof, it's protected against the weather. It's been um, oiled with linseed oil, so it should help to protect it against the weather as well. And um, as long as you don't sit it on the ground, it should last years and years and years and years. And the bees will keep coming back um, over the years, because they have with mine. 
But you won't get blue banded bees in No, no blue banded bees. They, they, they the have dirt. to have the dirt, yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching EnviroTube. Looking forward to seeing you next time.